We are beginning a brand new series on how to deal with difficult people. Maybe you have a meeting coming up or a gathering and you are totally dreading going to that meeting because, well, because probably of somebody that's going to be there. Well, today, Pastor Stan is going to give us some tips and pointers on how we can start inviting God into that kind of interaction. If we are going to be people who are going to create ripples for God, then we need to first start with knowing how to deal with relationships. We all have people who are difficult and who we really would rather avoid than uh, interact with. The first thing I wanted to uh, present was our current and future behavior is influenced by our past experiences or how we frame or interpret those experiences. We have implicit memories, which are those interactions that we don't even have to think about. They just seem to come up automatically. And so they don't recall any, we, they don't require any processing or um, intentionality. And the second category of memories is called explicit memories. And those are memories that we actually have to ha have a sense of being and a intentionality in bringing up. So the best example would be, uh, Probably when you study for a class, you're going to have to take your will and intentionally go after that information. What this strategy that I'm going to be describing involves is making implicit memories more explicit. So in other words, instead of just automatically having something come up and us reacting to it, to be able to take hold of it and put it into a context of analyzing or having a, a path by which we will respond to whatever that memory is. In uh, Christian terms, perhaps, it's to truly find the truth in the situation. I thought of a verse that kind of reflects the overall message of this series, and it's Romans 12, 9, and it, this is how it reads, Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another, and never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. So what we're going to be looking at is how can we activate our mind so that it's influenced by uh, things that are true and that are helpful and what I would define as healthy rather than destructive. One of the first steps is to uh, reframe, uh, like I talked about, our memories. And uh, Romans 12, 2, again, in the Passion, it reads this way. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. That passage tells us that what we choose to believe will affect how we view other people or a situation. To handle a difficult person or to handle a difficult experience, it's a matter of being able to see where God is in that situation or see where good is in the situation. So, how can we grow into this? How, how can we become uh, able to do that? The, second, the first thing I believe is we have to be healthy in ourselves. And that involves a second step in this process. It's called empathy and forgiveness. And Romans 12, 12, again, in the Passion reads this. Let this hope burst forth within you, releasing continual joy. Don't give up in a time of trouble, but commune with God at all times. So allow yourself to be able to choose to forgive the person in the situation. And forgiveness does not mean restoration, but it simply means that the hurt 
that you have is going to be released to God to heal. Forgiveness is actually more about you than the other person. So to forgive someone is not just, I forgive you. It's going to mean that every time this uh, implicit memory comes up, which is, again, something you didn't choose to have happen, but it just seems to come out of nowhere, that you're going to take it and take hold of it and be able to apply some explicit truth to that situation. So it no longer controls your behavior, that you're going to instead choose to operate in the truth and not from uh, what you uh, have remembered or the uh, feeling that happened. Forgiveness is a matter of we're willing to take the pain and uh, forgiveness, I believe it's, it's more about giving it over to God and saying, God, you paid for this. And so what you paid, I will accept this payment and that I don't have to try to get more than that. I'm going to be, help me to be content with that. Uh, that's forgiveness. Empathy is being able to feel it, being able to feel what was going on and not uh, like in the in the first verse I read about not being an actor who pretends that it doesn't, that uh, this is what I'm, what the script calls for, but really to be genuinely and authentically present in the situation and be able to experience something that uh, is transformative and uh, is real and not pretend. The third part of this is grieving. And uh, Romans twelve fifteen in the Passion reads as follows. Celebrate with those who celebrate and weep with those who grieve. To really experience emotion, whether good or bad, because it talks about being able to celebrate uh, as well as weep. Uh, that it involves more than you, that you can't just celebrate within yourself, that, that it's, it's incomplete. Celebration was, was meant to be shared with others. And so that the full experience of celebration is, is actualized. Same thing with grief. You can't just grieve by yourself. That, it, that yes, you start with being able to identify it, the pain. The next step I believe would be to go to God and have him share in it. But I believe there's something more that he calls us to. Grieving, I believe, is meant to be shared with other individuals, to truly be able to process the grief, to truly be able to see that you are not alone in the grief. As we go through this, I would invite you to think about uh, some difficult people perhaps, or even uh, if that difficult person is you. Maybe you don't like yourself. And I think these principles of being able to reframe what uh, your thoughts about yourself and this other person are, to be able to have empathy and forgiveness for those uh, attitudes or for whatever injury that those things brought about and to be able to understand it, to not run away from it, to not deny it, but to be able to embrace it and grieve over what was lost, but not alone. And I believe he provides a community to be able to do that. And there's a lot more that we could talk about this because it's not like I can give you uh, simple steps and all of a sudden everything becomes like a magical uh, fairy tale ending. This is a hard and long process and there's no other way to become healthy than through this hard, long process. But it's also a process that you don't have to do by yourself and God never intended for you to do by yourself. I invite you to, to take some time to read through Romans 12. If you want to talk more about some of these things, I'd be happy to talk with you. Uh, as we go through the series, we're going to do some practical kinds of things with it. And uh, 
just be at a place where it may be hard, but it's doable. It will happen that God intends you to be healthy, not to be sick all your life and all your existence here on earth.